Hello guys, welcome back to RX Geeks Pathology once again. This is Dr. Anjit, and here we are going to discuss about embryonal carcinoma, testis ovary or the mediastinum. Right? So embryonal carcinoma, like I said, it can happen in testis ovary mediastinum, sometimes in retroperitoneal areas as well. It's one of the highly malignant germ cell tumors which can happen in these areas. So pretty much it's sometimes alone seen singly as an embryonal carcinoma or most of the times it's a part of a mixed germ cell tumor. Mixed germ cell tumor is undoubtedly the commonest one and whenever you see an embryonal carcinoma like areas I would want you to sample more so that you don't miss any other component of germ cell tumor be it in York sac or be it in semi nomadas you should not miss them right. So that is one primary thing which I want every postgraduate and the pathologist here to understand whenever in microscope it shows like embryonal carcinoma go back to the crossing table look at it it will be very heterogeneous wherever you have any suspicious area give extra bits so that you don't miss on diagnosing a mixed germ cell tumor because prognosis obviously will be based on that fine right? like I said uh, it will be a little bit of an heterogeneous architecture in the cross you'll have solid area cystic areas hemorrhage necros is something which is pretty common in case of an embryo carcinoma it will definitely be heterogeneous it's it will not be homogeneous like in case of seminoma not exactly solid La solid area cystic areas hemorrhage and necrosis also will be visible in gross itself in case of an embryonic carcinoma it's undoubtedly a highly malignant tumor right so what is there in the store for the microscopy of embryonic carcinoma we'll definitely look into our slides very very soon right so before going to slides let's understand the patterns what we'll see and what are things i should keep in mind when i see uh, in microscopy what are the differential diagnosis you should keep in mind when you see the embryo customer slide right so embryo customer it can have multiple patterns uh, if you remember we had discussed about yolk sac tumor yolk sac tumor has many many patterns embryo customer has multiple patterns there are three common patterns you see solid our case also is also predominantly solid pattern more than 50 percent of the embryo customers are solid then glands can be said seen or glandular pattern or papillary appearance right so these three patterns occupy close to kind of 75 percent or 80 percent of embryo customers we can have micro papillary nested pseudo papillary can also be seen very very minuscule right so these are the predominant patterns what you'll be seeing embryo customer like i said more than 50 percent of embryo customer will be solid in appearance so when you see a solid tumor in the mic uh, in your uh, case of an uh, microscopy you might think yes seminomoso is a solid tumor it can have though yolk sac is most mostly microcystic not uh, exactly solid seminoma is definitely exactly solid right so if you look at the cytological architecture undoubtedly embryo customer is a very 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 high grade lesion right uh, based on the cross based on the microscope it's very high grade to be fair uh, if i can equate to something which you commonly see it kind of looks like a poorly differentiated squamous cell carcinoma that's all fine the cell morphology everything right you'll have very crowded cells overlapping nuclei can be there right the cell the nuclear architecture will be mostly vesicular with good amount of nucleoli and like i said like i said it's more or less like an squamous cell carcinoma little bit of an pinkish cytoplasm right you'll have the nuclei open vesicular nuclei prominent nucleoli and you'll have a moderate amount of mostly a amphophilic pink to granular cytoplasm is what you have right pleomorphism is very 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 evident it's high grade pleomorphism it's plus 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 right mitosis also will be very high grade that also will be seen it's also plus right and uh, sometimes you might have a smudgy appearance of chromatin ignore that but predominantly have a high grade nuclear lesion right the most characteristic finding is necrosis necrosis will be undoubtedly seen will have a predominantly area of necrotic area if you are first year and you are not able to identify necrosis something completely pink in color where you see the entire tumor architecture is gone only replaced by pink tissue that's necrosis we'll definitely look at them you can have both single cell necrosis and big big fossa of necrosis also fibrous area can be seen which are nothing but older areas of necrosis which is kind of destroyed healed and becoming a fibrotic tissue right so this is what you'll be seen in case of an embryo carcinoma like i said the most important thing is please search for other tumors like yolk sac tumor can be there you might see in the corner a few seminiferous tubules where you can have gci nis right the germ cell and your patient to all those things can be seen sometimes you can have poly embryoma like structure the embryoid bodies can be seen the most important thing is never ever miss the component of mixed germ cell tumor that's always should be kept in mind whenever you see a patient with an embryonal carcinoma if you want to go with markers embryonal carcinoma is one uh, it is cd30 positive okay 
this like most of the germ cell tumors will be OC3 bar 4 positive, SOX, uh, SOX2 positive and SAL4 positive, right? I think OC3 bar 4 and SAL4 is more than enough for you to say it's a germ cell origin, especially if the tumor is coming from the mediastinum or the retroperitoneum, where generally I don't see much of germ cell tumors, right? PLAP is positive. I'm not going with PLAP. PLAP does not have very good uh, specificity. It's very heterogeneous positivity. These three markers are more than enough for you to pinpoint embryonal carcinoma. They are negative for your secret CD1 once on, helps you to differentiate from your other germ cell tumors. D40 protoplanin is weak, Apache, Glypican is negative. See, because retroperitoneum might look like an heptocellular carcinoma, right? It might, right? So alpha beta protein is uh, positive in very few, like 10, 20 percent of them, that's all, right? So these markers is more than enough for me to pinpoint along with this tomophagy, it's an embryonal carcinoma, right? Now, let's have a quick look up about the lesion of embryonal carcinoma and I hope uh, with that we will come to a conclusion, okay? It's a section from the tumor. It's a very, very solid lesion, right? Ignore this part. This might be from the wall of the thing. It's a very solid lesion, right? Let's zoom in. Though I have a little bit of broken areas here that might be close to the uh, tumor lumen, that's not much of a concern. This is my tumor. This is the biggest uh, lesion. The entire thing is solid lesion, right? Let's zoom in. If you look, like I said, it's clear cut, right? It's a very, very highly malignant tumor. In this area, look at the beautiful mitosis here. Looks like a Mercedes Benz, right? A mitosis. Good amount of mitosis here, right? Very high grade nuclei. You, you, can, you can look at the mitosis. Fun two there's one more there right it's a very very high grade lesion right at the same time like i said i can have individual cell necrosis and also necrosis for a uh, group of cells right this is not necrotic area these are the bands of fibrosis which is seen there right it's bands of fibrosis if you're young very young in the first few years don't mistake them for necrosis this is how necrosis looks like completely pink look at this tumor cell it's blue it has a nucleus this does not have a nucleus the perfect necrotic area and you have the viable tumor area again necrosis necrosis it's very evident right so if i can go with this i maybe i can call this an individual cell necrosis this cell is gone but this cells are definitely viable right if you come here uh, yes, I do have groups of cells also necrotic, right? Individual as well as you can have predominantly a group of cell necrosis as well. But embryonal carcinoma is definitely a spotter which can come in an exam case for you. High grade nuclei, vesicular nuclei, prominent nuclei, good amount of mitosis, necrosis, always vouch for embryonal carcinoma. If possible, if required, you can go into the microscopy and say that is it GCT or uh, is it a mixed GCT or not. You can write in the footnotes that more samples should be given if it's an exam case, fine. Done. So we know about embryonal carcinoma. So what is the fun if we don't uh, discuss about the differential diagnosis, right? See, I told that embryonal carcinoma is a pretty decent one to diagnose. So I want you to keep in mind few things. Seminoma is generally not a differential diagnosis because gross will be characteristic here. If at all required, you do a seek it, it will definitely help you to rule out seminomas. Seminomas has most of the nesting pattern. Nesting pattern is very rare here. Seminoma is not this high grade uh, of a thing. You might not have uh, this amount of necros in seminoma. But yes, if required, do a seek it and differentiate. Two things which I want you to remember is, at least from my experience, right? to try to differentiate choriocarcinoma because choriocarcinoma is something which is extremely high grade which can be very 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 ugly like this one difference is choriocarcinoma will have sensation trophoblastic like area which might not be seen here right and very high amount of hemorrhage will be seen in choriocarcinoma obviously if you want to remember if you want a marker beta hcg will help you to say it's choriocarcinoma or not and one more important thing from experience is lymphomas if I give you a slide without any history, just this field, will you pick it over DLBCL? Yes, looks like a DLBCL, right? So lymphoma undoubtedly is one of the differential diagnoses to be kept, especially if the person is an elderly person. A lymphoma does, uh, well, at least an ovarian or a testicular lymphoma does not happen in a very young age. If will happen in elderly person, right, that might be a bit of a uh, difficulty for embryonal carcinoma, might not happen at 50 or 60 years, but this happens typically at 50 or 60 years. And obviously, markers a simple CD45 is more than enough. Obviously, like I said, it looks like a DL basis, so CD20 also might come in handy, right? So, these are things that you want you to remember when you're discussing or when you're seeing a slide of a choreo customer, right? Hope you enjoy the session. If you have any doubts, put in the comment section. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel and share it to your fellow pathologists. Let's make the entire world's pathology education amazing, right? See you soon. Till then, bye bye.